Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday, everybody. Thanks for coming out. What's up with that meme? There we go. That's a that's much better meme. Thanks a lot for coming out this weekend. We've got a really fun topic. This topic always brings out a lot of people. We're going to be talking about budget ham radios, but I've got a new take on it, and I hope you find this helpful and interesting. Lots of people always ask, why is ham radio so dang expensive? We'll talk about that a bit, but uh, more likely it's going to be talking about radios I recommend uh, covering pretty much most of the aspects you'd need or be interested in in starting out in ham radio. So enjoy the memes as we kick things off. And thanks again for coming out. All right. Love that song. Thanks, Darren. Darren, my buddy, Sonic D, out on Twitter and Twitch and Facebook. He does live DJing, particularly um, with the pandemic. Great stuff. The link is in the description, I believe, for his uh, his work. If not, I'll get that straightened out. It should be. It's been there for years. Anyway, hello. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Got a lot of people already coming out. That's very cool. Thanks, as always. Really appreciate all the activity we get in the, the stream chat. This is a conversation. And in fact, I, I believe we'll probably finish with enough time that we can crack open the Zoom for a, a wild card Zoom chat at the end here. So uh, stay tuned on that. I'll probably drop a link, assuming we've, we've got time to get to that. Not a ton of news this week. Ooh, look at that. Where's that weird effect going on? How that? There we go. Let's see if we can sorting that out. There we go. Uh, not a ton of news. Just want to point people to the website hamradiocrashcourse.com. It has all the links for all the stuff we're doing, like Ham Tactical, which is the merch store that my wife runs. So if you're interested in some Ham Radio Crash Course type merch, it's hamtactical.com, or you can find the link if you join us uh, over on the website. And we do have a Patreon as well, which this channel is basically supported by the kind, generous support of the viewers. So appreciate that. Reminder, we do have Huntsville coming up, and I always like to show this because of the cool... <laughs> this this crazy graphic where is it come on load there it is that water graphic yeah that's you don't see that much anymore that's that's a thing that uh there's not a lot of that on the web anymore and just fun news story we're, we're gonna dive right into the slides and get started but uh we're still waiting on that rocket to <laughs> that rocket booster to come back to earth and i i was talking to uh to kyle uh what is it h04 Oh boy, I'm I'm so bad with call signs sometimes. But Kyle, he's out on YouTube here as well, and he was saying he's going to a, a rocket crash party where they're they're doing bets to see where the rocket uh, is going to land, which I think is just very very funny. That whole concept is is great. Uh, so I don't know. We're, we're we should probably take bets because uh, likely the after chat, which is on Discord, by the way, Discord link is in the description. We do an after chat right after this live stream over on Discord where we talk ham radio have some fun and uh we're likely gonna see where this lands live uh a zero z thank you very much i know there's a z in there thanks so much appreciate that multiple people thank you so much appreciate that uh mike a e four a w to be very clear the zoom is will be during the live stream right now we'll of course do the discord after chat as always so uh thanks for checking that out okay let's see round the shack here i did get my my uh my my you know fan mail uh, framed and mounted so if you're uh, interested you can go follow me on Instagram at the Ham Radio Crash Course Instagram page where you can get a nice close up of what the words are in this beautiful handwritten torn out of spiral bound uh, notebook that a ham sent me and and really it's from the heart I feel his, uh, his words <laughs> so anyway what are we talking about today we're talking about what is that get out of here get out of there we go okay <laughs> we're talking about ham radio hey i said get out of here black square get out of there okay we're talking about ham radio on a budget and specifically we're talking about getting started right that's kind of going to be the main topic of of this talk so let, let's take a look at this 
You know, we, we talk about budgets for radio a lot. It comes up a lot. Today we're approaching this in, in kind of a different way because I feel like uh, often when I have this discussion, I give a ton of options, but maybe that's not what I should be doing. Maybe I should just give you a couple couple of options with very specific reasons behind the rationale behind it, and, uh, and we, we, we'll talk a little bit. Also, as a complete side note, I forgot to open my beer. We went to a place called Tokyo Central that does import uh, Japanese products, and they had a cool bunch of cool Japanese beers. So I'm drinking a Japanese IPA today. Never had a Japanese IPA, so I'm I'm quite interested by how this is all. Ooh, it's a good color though. That's fantastic. All right. Okay. So now we can truly begin. Again, thanks for coming out. Hey, Bill Brown. Thank you for the super chat. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Let's see before we get into. Make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat room. All right, Michael McBroom, total noob, first time here. Thanks for watching, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, very good. Okay, ham radio on a budget. Onward. So I get this. This is like verbatim, basically, the, the messages I get. Josh, tell me the best, the best ham radio to buy. And I always reply, what's your budget? And then they hit me with, yeah, about 60 bucks. Well, you can't really get the best for 60 bucks, okay? So that, that's how we're starting this off. You can get something. Can't get the best, necessarily. So we're going to talk about budgets, okay? And then I just mentioned this stuff up front because I think it's important. 100% subjective. Everybody's budget is going to be slightly different than someone else's budget. Budgets will vary, and of course, because of budgets, that will change your buying power. Alternatively, if you throw too much money into ham radio and you buy a ton of stuff, you can get like paralysis from like what you're looking at. Like, oh my gosh, I'm a brand new ham and I've got all this equipment and I've got this HF station and an antenna and a power supply and I got to figure out how to get this up on the house and or you know on an antenna mast. And it, it almost becomes jarring in some cases for people when when they get into a, this kind of I don't want to say trap, but, you know, it, it can be surprising to a lot of people. Steve, K04AFL, thank you for the super chat. He says, thanks for the videos from an HRCC VE. Steve, great job. And thank you for uh, testing people with a volunteer examination. Very good. Yeah, and, and of course, should give a shout out to, um, if you want to test online, there is an HRCC VE team, and you can find it by going to w8wot.us. Okay. Very good. So we're going to talk about this budget radio topic in, in two parts. Shoestring budget. Absolutely slimmest way to go with a, with a couple of alternatives. And then we're going to go for like a, a value-focused, goal-driven type of, of radio. Shoestring is I have almost no money. The radio options are going to be super entry level. The features will be slim as a byproduct of them being first level entry level radios. And they'll be handheld mobile base station radios. We'll all have some matter of, of differences in terms of what they have capability wise. But because they are the lowest common denominator for radios for the price point, they're going to be cheap and they're going to miss some features that you need. Uh, wow, two super chats. Thank you, Douglas Shannon. Thank you so much for the seven six two, my favorite number, and uh, not really data dataless. Not really dataless. The best Baofeng <laughs> for three dollars and fifty seven cents. That's my second favorite. People know what those numbers mean. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, we're going to talk about Baofengs. Of course, we have to, right? Of course, we do. Value focus though is I want decent but cheap gear to do something specific, or I, I kind of want like a step up but I'm still aiming for cheap, if that makes sense. Certain aspects of ham radio cost about this much, and I, I always have a number in my head when somebody says, ah, I want something that's roughly like this. So case in point, um, if, you, if you wanted to put in a mobile installation in a car, well, you're going to need an antenna. You're going to need a radio. You're going to need some doodads to go along with it, like an antenna mount. It's going to cost you about $300, $400, all things said, with a relatively inexpensive radio 340 dollars is you know pretty good benchmark and if you can get it done for 200 hey that's pretty good that's a pretty good deal so we're going to aim kind of for kind of that sweet spot and see how we how we do 
So tonight's examples, I'm going to give you shoestring, bottom barrel, and then like an inexpensive value option. And then I'm going to provide a baseline, kind of what I would point someone to if they had a decent budget, something that they think they could spend a little bit more money, get something a little bit nicer. Okay, so starting out with handhelds. Kind of, whoa. Is that shoe polish I taste? Wow, that's a, that's, that's funky. All right, so budget HTs. Honest answer here, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of cheap entry-level radios out there. You're looking at a bunch of bow things, right? The things I recommend, though, if you're looking at cheap, try to at least have these four items, right? SEC standards, it, it meets them specifically in the realm of spurious emissions, okay? That means, and, I, and I've done a video on this, when I was doing the nano, uh, sorry, tiny SA. The tiny SA is a spectrum analyzer, little, little boy, uh, and it'll do spurious emissions. You key up into it, and it'll show you where the, the spurious emissions are. Basically, the frequency that you're transmitting on, that's your primary frequency, and every harmonic off of that frequency there is a potential to have a, a secondary transmission kind of there's filtering that should go into ham radios that will prevent those spurious emissions it doesn't cost much to get a radio in fact we're going to talk about one that i think is kind of the benchmark for bottom of the barrel but still meets fcc standards also aim for robust sometimes robust is cheap right and i can just trash it right <laughs> if it breaks hey that's robust it's a uh, pricing robust if you will lots of channels is always good uh, aim for upwards of 100 more is better and and that's also dependent on location so if you if you live in an area with very little repeaters then you could probably do with less memory channels it becomes less important super chat from john thank you so much love the show w0jwt semper fi thank you i didn't serve but uh, that'll go out to everybody that did serve semper fi to them and then large battery larger battery largest battery the larger the battery means less time you have to charge it more time operating you're gonna have uh you're gonna have more fun playing radio Okay, so here's my baseline for HTs. Yes, there are other HTs I have recommended, but here is my baseline. The KG, the, the Wushan KG UV9D, it's about $169. Why am I using that as a baseline? Well, it's got a bunch of channels. It's dual band transmit, so it's 2 meters and 70 centimeters. It has a very wide receive. It's durable. There are a myriad kind of clone, not clones, but... Uh, changes to the the model number that Wushan makes if it's kg uv 9d or something along those lines and it looks like that and it puts out about eight watts max you're probably good if you get one cheaper by going with a a mate version or something like that that's fine it's it's a good radio highly recommended uh there are other radios the ft70 by yesu is in the same price range as the as the uv9d here but what did i say good battery and the ft70's got a little kind of lacking battery racer x07 w78 lhr so thank you for the super chat is there a site for satellite settings that you can download to rt systems you and leah are awesome keep it up tell yeah uh Oh, tell Leia I want an appliance operator hoodie that's not zip up in army green. Ooh, she could do that. Okay, we'll 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 take a look at that. Uh, yes, you go to Eris, Alpha Romeo India Sierra Sierra. Google that. Oh no, Era, uh, not Eris. Era, Eris. Um, what am I thinking of? Eris is the amateur radio uh, international space station. Um, ooh, you got me. Um, I I'm thinking it in my head. But it's if you look up ham radio satellites, it's going to be like the first website, and there will be a listing of FM sats and among any uh, many others, and that'll give you the the information for the uplink and downlink. Amsat, thank you, thank you, thank you, Philip, Pia or Paya and Kevin. Amsat, oh yeah, there it goes. See, anytime I have a pregnant pause, waiting for something to explode in my brain with the answer, you guys are right on it. Thank you, Amsat. Go Google Amsat. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. You get an idea of the baseline. So here comes the recommendations. So for budget handhelds, shoestring budget, cheapest you can go, Baofeng GT5R. This is the one that's produced by Radiodity, $25. So it's basically as cheap as a Amazon UV5R. It's FCC compliant. 
There's no spurious emissions. It's dual band, 125 channels. It's basically a Baofeng. It, I mean, it is a Baofeng. It's like a Baofeng with filters is basically it. Okay. Honorable mention here is the TYT UV88. And then I have one. Hold on. Where is it? This guy. This guy's great. Uh, this is a, a, a great little radio. It's it's basically a Baofeng as well. I know there's a lot of people that like it. It came highly recommended, so I pick one up. It's a Baofeng. I think it's like $25, you know, about $30. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Again, we're talking bottom bottom barrel, lowest common denominator. I don't know why I have these on anymore. You can... It doesn't get cheaper than a Baofeng. There is, there is nothing cheaper that you can go, basically. So... Going with something that has the, the filtering in it, good option. Highest, higher value. So that kind of a, a little bit more expensive than the Wushan, but higher value than going with a Baofeng or a Chinese radio, potentially. I give it to the Alinko DG VX50T. $99. It's kind of a, a step up from the Yesu Baofangs, as sometimes people call them, the Yesu Baofangs with filters. It's it's a decent dual band radio, not complex, but, but why do I give this the nod? Pretty simply. 200 memory channels, and it's IP67 rated, which 6 and 7, those are two numbers to denote two things. 6 means that it, it you can't get dust in it, it, it won't it won't be subjected to um, any damage from dust coming in. And the 7 is that it is marginally splash-proof. It can take about 30, like a dunk for a couple of seconds. Um, I believe the limit is 30 seconds, and it won't do any damage. So that's pretty good. So it's robust, so it's not going to break on you if you drop it, you kick it around, whatever. Uh, it does have a pretty wide receive frequency, which is, again, one of the reasons why I mention it. It does do AM for airband, which fantastic more features that's great there is um and then it's dual band of course for two meters and 70 centimeters okay mobile radios did i miss anything in the chat lots of chat thank you so much i have to let the dog in uh, or i'll have to get leia to let the dog in because she's crying <laughs> sorry about that so we're moving on to mobile radios here Okay, in the mobile baseline, here's my baseline. Baseline pick for mobile radios, ICOM IC2730. It's a good analog radio. It's about $260. It has 1,052 channels, and it has multiple channel groups that you can put your different memories into so you can swap around and do different controls that way because again some people have a ton of repeaters in their area like I do so for them this is a pretty good option I use this radio that's actually my radio right there that's that's shown with the power supply that I sometimes run it for or off of it also has a decent wide receive frequency capability dual band as well very simple easy to use 50 watts output which is kind of a benchmark for mobile radios that i recommend easy to program again easy to use and it's got a big screen looks uh you know just baseline baseline radio doesn't have any of the the fancy features like aprs or anything like that but works really well ham radio for non-techies my wife passed her technician today thanks for your videos ki5 npl congratulations that's awesome and michael uh Co cotalesa lesa cotalesa thank you very much for the super chat hope i didn't budget or butcher your name all right so baseline Going from the baseline down to budget, shoestring, absolute shoestring, the Anytone AT778UV. It's about $135. The downside for both of the radios I'm going to mention at the shoestring level is they are 20 watts output. The honorable mention going to the QYT KT8900D, which is cheaper, it's kind of funky to use. I've never liked operating that radio. Controlling it's kind of a pain. These are my personal feelings. If you disagree, that's fine. I'm just telling you my thoughts. The Anytone is a bit nicer to operate, easier to use from my point of view, so that's why I went with that. These radios have 200 channels, about 20 to 25 watt output for power. 
also very, very stripped down as far as the capability that it has. It, it's not a um, not a ton that they that they actually do, other than you know just like a Baofeng, but in mobile uh, a mobile platform that you can run a little bit more power. All right, so higher value. I've always I, I like Alinko. Alinko showed up twice now here for kind of a cheap, but a little bit above the the cheapest. The DR135. Now now both of these radios are two meter only. So this is a mono band radio, but you get, I believe it's 60 watts output, even though I, I wrote 50 here. I know that the ICOM 2300 does 65 watts output, so you get a little bit more power. They're small, not as small as the Alinko or the QYT, but with that, you get transmission through the two meter band, a little bit less channels. In this case, though, this is a TNC ready radio. It will do uh, APRS, it will do packet radio with, with not a lot out of pocket. You can throw a TNC on it. You can throw a Raspberry Pi on it and get to work with that, and they work really well. Very inexpensive, too. The Alinko is 155 which arguably you're not going to get much cheaper than that, except the ICOM IC2300 is actually on sale right now, and I think it's like $120. Now, you'll note um, the higher value ones here are all Japanese radios. They're probably going to have a little bit better quality, a little bit better um, warranty to them. They're they're just going to be better radios, I think, overall uh, than than the Chinese radios. That's again my personal opinion. But cool thing about the Alinkos is they are mono band, but they make a mono band for two meters, seventy centimeters, ten meters, six meters, and I believe two twenty as well. So if you don't if you don't have the option you want or you want specifically one band over another, just go buy it. You know, they've got plenty of options for that. So pretty good stuff. Uh, does Alinko sell a 6-meter FM mobile, asks Andrew Ball. Yes, they do. That's exactly what we're talking about. So, yeah, good question. All right, so mobile before HT. i got to mention this because sometimes you can save money just by skipping the HT altogether and just going with a mobile radio. If, you, if your budget really doesn't allow you to buy an HT and a mobile, and, and sometimes people will make you think you got to get an HT first, and then you got to get a mobile, et cetera, et cetera, sometimes you can save money in the long run by just not getting an HT. Where I live, HTs work well. When we are talking about potentially someone that lives in a part of the country or part of the world where there's not a ton of repeaters, and maybe they're pretty f you know, far spaced out, and there's some mile in between you and the, and the repeater, you might be better off with a mobile anyway because you get higher output power, better antennas because they're required to have an antenna, right, connected to it directly via coax, mounted up on your roof, mounted on a mast, put it on a fence line, something like that, right? So you're going to have a much better situation anyway most of the time going with a mobile radio over an HT as far as making contacts and communicating. Uh, generally, mobiles have more... Uh, more memory slots. There are many mobiles that have more features than HTs, but they get expensive, so they're not really covered in today's talk. Again, today's talk is just budget entry-level radios. Rick Spivey, thank you very much for the super chat. K04, sorry, K04OBR. Thanks for everything. Looking forward to Huntsville. Yeah, buddy, I'm going to be in Huntsville. It's going to be great. Cons with a mobile radio. Uh, if you are not putting it in a mobile, and you're going to have to charge it. Run, you're going to have to give it a power source of some kind. Obviously, if you put it in a car, it's going to run off your 12-volt source, and you can run you know, just fine that way. If not, though, if you want to put it in your home, you're going to need a power supply. So here's my baseline power supply that I recommend. This is the PowerWorks SS30DV. It's like 110 bucks at Ham Radio Outlet. This one does a 30-amp output capability so with this you can run both a hf radio and a vhf uhf potentially uh, radio off of the same power supply maybe not be able to transmit at the same time but you'll run like you can transmit on one while the others in receive and vice versa without much of a problem and that's exactly what i do um, i'm putting something together i got a cool kit coming together in, a, in hopefully a couple of months here, uh, and it, it features this power supply. I've really enjoyed this. It's bulletproof. Obviously, there's no controls to it. There's no screen. There's no dials. There's no doohickeys. It's just, here's your power. There you go. Um, let's see. The only thing, 14.1 volts might be too high. I think that's okay, though. Make sure to check your radio. Make sure you don't blow it up. They do have the PowerWorks option I have, um, maybe a little less voltage. I'll have to check that. 
Andrew V says, hi, KI6NAZ. I'm a huge fan. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> the big plus two with these, all of the PowerWork stuff usually has power pole connectors. The world and everything should go to power poles anyway. That's those little red and blue connectors there. Trust me, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for the pointing out the typos. Uh, run a new, a ru, yeah, a RU radios, including one, <laughs> one HF station. Yeah, I, I'm pretty bad with typos. Unfortunately, I didn't have Leia uh, proofread my work tonight. <laughs> thanks, John. Um, David Davenport, don't forget the Yesu 2980. Yeah, good, good point. And by the way, when hope, I think we're going to have time. When, when I open up the Zoom, I, I would like people to call in. You're not really calling in with Zoom, but come tell me what you uh, would recommend as kind of the, the lower end of, of entry-level radios. I would love to hear your thoughts. Red and black, yeah. Okay, so how about antennas to go along with your mobile? If you're in a car, I went with some cheap options here. The Tram Dual Band Mag Mount, 38 bucks. It's the Mag Mount, the antenna will run a coax, 38 bucks. Tram's okay. They, they, they've got an okay name for for them uh, within the within the ham radio community. They're, they're all right. There's a cheap lip mount also that I linked. I have no experience with this cheap lip mount, so don't don't at me if it's if it's not a good one. But it's 30 bucks, so kind of hard to beat when your closest relative costing lip mount is like $65, $70, so half the price. Take a take a gamble. By the way, link is in the description to the Amazon list that I put a lot of stuff together on. And for on your car, if if you go with the lip mount, you can actually just go with a diamond forty inch dual band antenna. It's like forty or fifty bucks at HRO. That's a very good antenna. I have two of those. Forty inches works good. All set. Uh, and then at home, my recommendation at home, uh, I I you can you can go cheap. You can obviously home brew do that whole game uh, but if you want to just get an off-the-shelf antenna the diamond x300 alpha which is a um how many f it's 10 10 feet eight feet i think it's eight feet great that's the antenna that's on the far right with the little spurs out of the bottom it's basically a ground plane antenna works fantastic i, I have a very similar antenna on my roof and i pretty much can do whatever I want, minus some gain stuff for satellites and all that. But but absolutely fantastic for for running uh, running at home. All right, some of you have been probably waiting for this, but I bet most of you know the answer to this. What's going to be my what's going to be my two HF uh, radios? The bottom of the basement, bottom barrel, and then the kind of value option where it's cheaper, but you get a lot for what you pay for. I bet you everybody's going to guess one of them. Maybe not the second, though. Jarrett already got it. G90. Uh, Mike, AE4AW with the 7300. No. No, not my baseline. Want to know what my baseline is? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Hold on. We'll get there. Uh, have you heard the good word on CW? If you're interested in getting onto HF cheaply, really cheaply, Consider learning Morse code. You will save a ton of money. Uh, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, you will get a lot more radio. You'll get a lot more operating capability if you go and learn Morse code. Just the, the QCX, which is the upper left uh, radio there, it is the bare circuit board one. They make a case for this. It, it is a kit. You have to build it. It's $49. $49. And you can use that. You can go crazy uh, on Morse code with that. Fantastic little radio. And you'll be you'll be absolutely floored. So I would I would check that out. I, I would recommend if you do want to save money and you want to have a really good time with radio, I think. Not many people do this right out of the gate. I appreciate that. But Morse code is, is definitely the way to go. I think I think you'd like it. Good recommendation there. So Park AE5CY. Yo, my first live stream. Cheers. Hey, cheers, buddy. I'll take a I'll take a little sip of this uh, shoe polish beer. Mm. I'm not a fan of this. Not a fan. Now, if you want something a little bit uh, more expensive than the QCX, Mountain Topper has a wonderful name, the LNR Precision Mountain Topper. $300 to $400, kind of expensive. This is going to be the only used radio I mentioned this entire time. I've done a separate video live stream on used radios, buying used radios, where to find them. Uh, so you can go check that out if you're interested. A used Elecraft KX1. 
I mean, if you can find one of these, you should buy one just because, man, uh, what an amazing radio. I, I, Dawn says, who is not proud of their KX1 that would let it go for 200 300 I bought my KX1 for $250. So that's why I said 200 or $300. <laughs> Yeah, so um, fantastic radio. If you see one, like if you go to Huntsville, Huntsville, and you see one, just buy it. Um, maybe depending on price, two three hundred might be a little, little cheap for a fully featured one. But again, we're aiming for budget friendly. So used is sometimes the way to go. Uh, but I want all the HF modes. You say I don't want to do CW. I'm not interested in uh, CW. So here's my baseline. Everybody got thought 7300. Well, because 7300 is $1000, right? That's that's a bit more than uh, entry. It is an entry level radio, but again, we're aiming for lowest common denominator entry level and then um, a a bit higher up in the features spec. The 7100 is uh, also an interesting budget choice because it is an all band all mode radio so you could forego an ht a mobile and just have this radio so it's a cost savings option as well why is the ft891 not on the list as the baseline being technically cheaper because this also does vhf uhf value points to this it's a cost savings. I already mentioned that. One USB cable out for digital. One USB, boom, into your computer, you're running. That's it. It's like the 7300. It has the ICOM menu system, which most people like the ICOM menu system. I certainly do. It's very good. 100 watts output. So this is like my baseline. This is the one I would recommend if you're aiming for the cheaper side of the house, but you want a, a good all things considered, all things covered in one box, this is the one. There is not many amateur radios out on the market that are all band, all mode. This is one of the only ones that is sub $1,000 that I know of. But join the Zoom and tell me if there's another one. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. Bottom of the barrel. Who said micro bit X? I know somebody did. Somebody said they love their micro bit X. All right. So shoestring very little budget you can get yourself a micro bit x for 209 dollars you may have to get a little fancy with the enclosure um so keep that in mind there is also an upgrade to the v6 model this came out relatively recently it's 59 dollars and uh yeah it's hard to beat this it is a kit though and when i say kit it's assemble it's an assembly um thing it'll do pretty much whatever you want after you put some effort into it there are mods, there are how-to documents online that covers the gamut of whatever you'd want to do with the micro bit X. You do have to have patience. So who said that? Uh, Rafael Pinto says uh, you have to have a lot of patience. That is the downside. Uh, you will learn a lot from it. It is very much a, a hobbyist radio, but it doesn't have any filtering. It has no AGC. It can get super loud, pulls in a ton of noise. You can do anything you want, but you're going to pay a little bit more out of pocket for some components, and you're going to have to do some soldering on it to make that work. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Don, N5SKT says, but where is the Hermes light? Great, great comment, Don. I didn't include the Hermes light, uh, or is it Hermes? Hermes light, because uh, you have to have a computer with it. I didn't include SDRs that, are, that require a computer, because we're, we're talking budget, right? And I don't want to assume somebody has a computer. It's like, oh, yeah, here's here's your $200 radio. Um, but, oh, by the way, you're going to need a laptop to make it run. You know, that kind of stuff. So a great radio, though. Uh, no no shame on the uh, on that one. All right, higher value. Who, who called it? Um, yeah, it's the G90. No question. P possibly... I I can't think of a, a better a better radio um, if you really want a budget friendly radio uh, for getting into HF. I I I am always surprised when I use that radio in what you get for what you pay for. And you don't you don't get a lot. I'm not going to say that right, but it does have some larger feature functionalities and some features that larger more expensive radios just don't have at all right downside 
20 watts output is probably the worst thing about the radio. It is a little funky on CW. It has a very loud side tone. It's kind of got a funky side tone. So if you're a, a primary Morse code operator, this is probably okay, but you know, there's a little bit of quirks you have to get used to. It's rugged, it has a screen, it has an antenna analyzer built in with an antenna tuner. It does need active cooling though when you use um, the radio on digital modes actively. If you're like aggressively working FT8 with this, you're gonna need active cooling. The good news is they do sell a like a cradle that kind of snaps onto the bottom of the radio or it hugs the radio and there's a fan that's just pumping air into it. With that on, you can run this thing in, in direct sunlight on a summit and just go on digital. No big deal. Uh, and that, that works really well. It is a bit quirky to interface it with a computer. You got to use something called a CE19 interface. And yeah, that can be, you know, that, that's not too much more money, but it's something to consider mine. All right. How about antennas? Uh, no question. Who, who catches the uh, the reference in the in the in the words here? Hopefully somebody gets it in the chat. Uh, okay. What about antennas on a budget? Go make one. <laughs> Go to Home Depot and make a dipole. I the podcast I did last week was on my first dipole. I just took a bunch of wire and some PVC pipe coupling, made myself a dipole, no ballon, and I had a blast with it until I upgraded to a later antenna. I think actually the second one I built was another dipole. But yeah, my first one was just a simple dipole, no ballon, anything like that. You can do that too. There's nothing wrong with that. If you go with the G90, because it has a tuner in it, you can actually just get away with stringing up a long wire of a certain length and then have a, a radial or something like that that'll work too okay anything from the qrp guys if you're not doing 100 watts you're going to be fine very inexpensive kits for building an antenna km4ack uh km4ack linked in the description i did a review of his antenna i built it tested it great and fed half wave kit He's out of stock right now. I confirmed with him before the live stream that he'll be back up and running in a couple of weeks. So for those of you that have been waiting, he's got more coming. So keep that in mind. Gordon's Farmer, uh, Gordon Farmer's Forge. He says DX Commander. And if that fits in your budget, absolutely. It's, what is it, $120, $140, $150? So a little bit more expensive, but that is a... You know, if you want an antenna to go along with your 7100, if you are going baseline option, get that get that antenna. Yeah, that's that's going to be a good time. Uh, the 7100 and a DX Commander would be fantastic. Okay, so that's my last slide. See, I, I knew uh, I knew I wanted to do just a, a straight and to the point um, topic for today. And I think I accomplished that. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we're, we're going to wildcard it. Uh, there's a Zoom link, and uh, that is how you join me on Zoom right now. Try to have your camera on, and if you have uh, some thoughts or comments, make sure you you come with those, particularly on the topic of budget radios. That's what I'd like to talk about. Yeah, Phil Dural says, Step IR is your dipole replacement? <laughs> no. It took me a long time to get to the uh, to the... Uh, step IR. Mm. Okay. Where's my zoom? There it is. Okay, hold on one second, guys. All right, a lot of people. Hold on. We're going to start pulling you in one at a time here. And thanks again for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. All right, let me hide my... Are you there, Rob? You're muted. Go ahead and unmute. Or sorry, Bob. We'll give him a second. Hey, I hear you. Are you there? Go. All right. How's it going? Very good. Out here in San Diego for a couple of weeks. 
um, from Connecticut. So, uh, are you playing any radio while the, you're out there? Yeah, went up to HRO this morning. Ah, yes, San Diego HRO, good HRO. <clears throat> yeah, it's a nice one. It's mm-hmm. about a three-hour drive to the one in New England from where I live. So, always good when it's about 15 minutes away. Yeah. So let me ask you, what uh, do you have any comments on budget radios? Uh, I liked what you presented. I think uh, they're all good options. I think the biggest thing that uh, new hams need to figure out when it comes to a budget is what is it they really want to do. You're right. Thumbs up. If it's, if it's just going to be two meters, then you're right. Uh, mm-hmm. I think a mel- mobile rig is, is an awesome way to go. Yeah. Because uh, it'll do everything, and you can figure out how to take it in and out of your vehicle if you want. Um, where I am, there's plenty of repeaters, so HTs work fairly well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's all about how much you got and what you want to do with it. Yeah, I think and, you're. I think you're spot on. Uh, also, though, I think for some new hams, and I appreciate there's a dichotomy here with some new hams. They may not know what they want to do. So I, I appreciate that, too. I think that's part of the reason why YouTube exists, right? You can watch people operating the different modes, and you may know other hams, join a club. You'll get an idea of what you want to do pretty quickly, I think, if you do it that way. Yeah, I think that's a, <clears throat> that's a big challenge for, uh, I think, for ham clubs and for uh, uh, YouTube really fits that Elmering thing right now with uh, mm-hmm. not the ability to go out and meet with folks but to show them all the different things they can buy. Mm-hmm. Um, Baofengs and uh, inexpensive radios work just fine for an awful lot of folks, and it's a great way to learn. And, uh, you know, 25 to to $100 is not a lot of money to uh, for most of us, mm-hmm. you know. I agree. Well, hey, thanks for the super chat, Scott75, uh, mobile honorable mention, the Kenwood TM280. Single band, but 65 watts, easy to use, sub 200. Also a good recommendation. So we got Mike joining us. Mike, why don't you go ahead and unmute there if you want to say hi or you got a comment. <laughs> we got we got him. <laughs> Sorry, I had your other stream playing. Oh, thank you very much for muting that. By the way, everybody that's on that will eventually get on the Zoom, make sure you mute the stream, otherwise it's going to get crazy. So go ahead. I just got my tech, uh, technician ticket. Want to get my uh, general on Monday. Already bought an HF radio because uh, as a commitment device, so I made sure to just get my general ticket. So and watch the channel. It's good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Right on. Uh, any comments on? Budget-friendly radios. You know the GD seventy-seven with the Open GD seventy-seven is pretty cool for DMR. Oh yeah, so that's another that's another form-specific radio, right? It's it's really good at DMR, not the best analog radio, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. I believe you. <laughs> yeah, good good comment on that. Okay, very good. Hang tight. We'll bring in somebody else here. Let's see. <laughs> Brown 8335. I'm looking at your phone. <laughs> okay, well, we'll come back to him. Who else have we got? Got a lot of people, so thanks for... Yeah, we got all these trolls in the... Uh... In the live stream. Hey, John, go ahead and unmute, too, when you uh, get a moment. Oh, hey. <laughs> How's it going, John? I just thought I'd uh, click in here. I'm, I am I, I just got a 7100. Pretty well, pretty well. No, oh, you got to mute the live stream while you're on the oh. Zoom. So you there went we you went with the baseline option. You got a Icom seventy one hundred. How do you like it? Well, oh, I lost you. You muted yourself again. You got to mute the YouTube video, not the Zoom. Right. Okay. Now you're good. Well, I'm, now I've I've unmuted everything. Oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, that's good. So, um, I'm I'm new to this. Uh, I did. I did get my general, mm-hmm. but I'm incompetent. Um, <laughs> so I was wondering. I, I just ordered the 7100, which will arrive on Monday. Okay. 
Oh, and okay. So I'm uh, debating what to do about antennas. So I was going to go, uh, my idea was instead of just getting um, a basic mobile, I'd get the 7100 because I could use it as a base station. Correct. Yes. Uh, I saw you recommended the DX Commander, but what, I mean, if I go over to, I'm in Orange County, so despite my background, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, it, 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 is that a vertical that you'd recommend, or should I just go over to HRO and? I would. I, I would absolutely recommend the DX Commander. That is an HF antenna, though. You can't. You could tune it for two meters, but uh, realistically, I would use that for HF. The 7100 has two antenna ports. It has a VHF UHF antenna port and then an HF antenna port. So you would need two antennas to run those two sides of the the transceiver. Right. So that's one thing I figured out. I basically need two antennas. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But, I, I mean, you could go down to HRO and kind of explain to them, hey, I'm getting this 7100. I, I'd like to put up a VHF UHF antenna. Like, you know, what I do is I just mount it to the eaves of my house and just bolted it in with, like, a, a very cheap, like, TV antenna uh, mounting bracket. And that works perfect for me. Right on. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, hang on, and uh, you guys just stay right on if you want to. We'll have some more people here. Got a couple people maybe joining. We'll see. There we go. Ryan, go ahead and unmute when you got a second. Hey, look at that shack. Look at that workbench he's got. Very nice. So, uh... Yeah, I just upgraded to General probably a couple weeks ago, and I'm taking the route of, a, you know, I'm not sure what areas I want to start focusing on, but uh, buy one, cry once, you know. So I'm going to start spending the money on the copper for all the grounding around the house. Oh, good man. You know, just kind of doing it right the first time instead of, you know, 10 years from now, tearing everything up and having to redo it. So. Mm -hmm. Once That's, I get it, you know, bonding and grounding finished, then I can start, you know, you know, I, I actually just bought a nice big 60 amp linear power supply. So that should you know, okay. fit any requirements in the future, but um, still shopping for HF radio. You know, I got a bunch of HTs, but that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I see your background. I, I see a, a Wooshin. I see a, what is that? A, a Kenwood. Yeah. I got the 74. Yeah. And then the DF3, uh, Oh man, you you got you got all the top dollar mm -hmm. HTs right there. Very cool. Playing with a little hot spot, you know. Mm -hmm. trying, so it's fun. Yeah, right on. Um, so you're considering HF radio. What what are you what are you looking at doing? Um, there's real active up here in the Northeast. So you know, forty twenty. You know, I've been browsing the uh, Stepper IR website quite a bit. You know. Ah yeah. But it's. Uh, you know, it's a big investment. It is a big investment. There's a lot to do with it as well. You got to put some work in. So, yeah, but right on. The, yeah, for the springtime, it's going to be a, 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 a N fed half wave mm -hmm. going from the peak of the house over to a tall tree across the yard. Um, I got plenty of length, so it should, you know. Yeah. What um, since you're since you're primarily using HTs now, what would you recommend or point somebody to if they wanted to get an HT and they kind of wanted to go with something inexpensive? I have a bunch of Baofengs, but this Wushan, excellent. You know, just the, the power, um, easier to use. It's, uh, you know, relatively logically laid out. Mm -hmm. um, it's great. I That's, got it hooked up to a J-Pole right now. I see uh, that. Yeah, you, uh, very nice. I, that was the same radio I recommended, basically, except you have a, uh, you've got the orange, the Mate version. Yep. Very good. Right on. Solid radio. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, well, hang tight. We'll add somebody else in here. Cool. Alex, KN6IWB, you're on. <laughs> we see Alex. Does he know we see him yet? You're on. Hey there. Sorry, I had to mute the stream really quick. No problem. What's up, man? How's it going? Uh, I'm doing well. I, uh, Sorry, I had to mute uh, the stream really quick. <laughs> He's got it a little bit going still. It's all right. Just go ahead and mute the YouTube. There we go. All right. I um, 
I liked the cry once, buy once analogy, but I, um, for in my application to avoid two different radios, I have my Yesu FT3D that I use in the uh, uh, truck. And mm -hmm. then I bought a small HT amp that I put under the seat um, and it ran the coax through the dash to that and then the antenna out the back of the truck. Um, so I didn't have to buy two radios. I spent a lot of money on an HT, but I still have the higher power, mm -hmm. uh, which has helped me when I'm driving around with that. That was kind of my uh, compromise, I guess. Yeah, that works. I mean, uh, how, how how's the amp held up for you? Uh, so far, so good. It definitely has its limits. I tried to hit a UHF repeater and it didn't like it. It started buzzing under my seat and uh, that, uh, that gave me a little fright. And then every once in a while, I don't know what it is, it um it throws a code up on my dash and the car goes into like limp mode and i have to pull over so, the amp does that yeah uh <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, as soon as i key up the dashboard lights up and then the, i have to pull over and reset everything so i keep a code scanner in my glove compartment just to clear that so i can get going again but what's what's the code that it throws too much amp uh, no, it's something to do with the uh, the accelerator. It, like, oh, yeah. oh! So the RF is messing with the uh, the electronics in the in the car. I'm yeah, like, and man, it, you're it not trying be, to go it, ahead. Go ahead. It, it could just be the routing of the coax through the dash. I'm not sure, like if it's crossing something or um, that that scares me to be honest. It is actually terrifying, and I've I've since stopped using it a whole okay, lot. Okay, good but... good call, good call. <laughs> I don't know um, of a net that's that important to check into that you're going to potentially yeah, wreck your car. I'm really only, I'm really only ever monitoring uh, as I'm driving around anyway, just because I don't tend to chime in unnecessarily. So mm -hmm. usually the amp's off and I can still hear just fine. So. Yeah, James Hannibal of Q, uh, Quirky QRP is in the chat, and he says, time to throw some ferrites on the wires <laughs> on that car. It's probably a good idea to do that. Yeah, what, uh, somebody asked, what kind of coax are you using? Um. I'm I'm terrible with the numbers. It's the really thin stuff, so that I can snake it in the dash real well. That could be part of it, but yeah, yeah. yeah somebody said Wi-Fi accelerator. That's right. <laughs> it's a wireless accelerator. Very good. Uh, that's not a. I, I've heard it's much. It's much rarer that somebody does what you've done, but I've heard people like it. So if it's, it's working for uh, you, right on. It worked for now, but I. I you know, I upgraded to general and I started buying more radios and now I want to dedicate a mobile radio to the car and it'll get rid of the, all those issues. Sure. Ho hopefully. But I, I assume, I want to believe it will. I think it will. So. Yeah. Right on. Very cool. All right. Hang tight. We've got some more people that are that are in here. Oh, hey, there's a there's a name I recommend. We'll, we'll let him jump right in. And I'll, tr I'll try to get to most of you. Hey, hey, Kim. We'll let him uh, get his audio there. Oh, you're muted. Oh, still muted. Got it. How about that? How you doing, man? Uh, doing great. Happy Mother's Day uh, to all the moms out there. And uh, looking forward to that tomorrow. The, um, the thing I was going to mention in terms of a base antenna is the Ed Fong uh, J-poles that you can get inside a piece of PVC and they're like 50 or $60. Yeah. They do not have the gain of the one that you recommended for 140, but as a budget option for your house, uh, I have a tri-band and I use his TVJ one and I get into all the nets, including the 220 on that, the, mm -hmm. the DB, DB two that he has, I, I forget. But just look up Ed Fong, J Pole. You're a hundred percent right. Good, good call. Yeah, I uh, I have the roll up option, which is one that you can take portable if you want to take that on soda or whatever. That works great. Uh, and I believe the what's cool about the the PVC version of it is you just supply the PVC pipe. It comes with the caps on it, and you run the pipe, run the antenna through it, through the pipe, and then you just put the end cap on. And that's it. It's you seal it up at that point. You're good to go. Pretty cool antenna. It bounce, bounce on anything with a conduit clamp. Yep. And, and you're good. Mm. Yeah. And good I, tip. I found 
out about to roll up Jay Paul from you, I think, like most of the things that I've found out about in M Radio. So thank you. Yep. That's a good uh, that's a good one for when you're operating a portable for sure. Well, I'll let you talk to some other guests. Thanks for taking my call. No problem. You can hang on if you got comments. That's uh, no okay. big deal. So let's Very let's good. let's try and uh, we'll we'll go wild here. We'll we'll add three people. Hey, we got the Brandstrom family. How's it going? Hey, yeah. I guess my wife left it. Name that Chris. <laughs> um, the whole so family's yeah, here. It, Let's go. I got, I got into the, uh, I had a GMRS license first uh -huh. and I kind of came to it from the like disaster preparation side of things. Then I started learning about ham radio, found out my grandfather was a ham, never knew it mm -hmm. um, because he died years ago. But um, at first it was like, okay, VHF, UHF was what I was thinking. But then I tested, I got my tech in general at the same time last year. And then started to realize, oh, actually, I'm really interested in the HF stuff. Yeah. Right. So I have that same issue. Like, okay, how do I start? I don't have the budget right now, but I'm thinking about it. Right. I got, like the other guy said, I got the, the ocean, the UV 9P here. So that's been really good. That actually works pretty well in the car mm -hmm. with the mag mount antenna. I can, I can reach a couple of repeaters around me when I'm on the road with that I kind oh, of from in the car just just from talking on the in the car you, you're able to hit repeaters pretty well with it oh yeah nice yeah. but i'm on oahu and the the repeaters ah. are all kind of close which is which is good mm -hmm. so there's a couple around the island so you know i'm only like i mean but the furthest one is probably 10 miles <laughs> so that's not bad it, that's pretty good that's, it's, Oahu, it works pretty well. Have you joined any clubs out there, ham radio clubs? There's a lot of decent clubs in, in there Oahu. Are, there are some. I haven't yet. Okay. Um, I've just started to – I'm just trying to force myself to talk right now. Yeah, yeah. To get on the mic, to start talking good. to people. People out here are good, though. They're friendly. Um, if you come to visit, they're like – even on the club websites, they're like, you're free to use the repeater, you know, especially the one in Diamond Head, which is near Honolulu. Oh, yeah. Any uh, tourist can hit that one, no any problem. Any yeah. can hit that one, and you're welcome to, to get on there. I got my eye on the FT-991A, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to uh, that the buy once, cry once, slash sure. Sure. jack in the box. I could skip the mobile base rig and get an all mode, all band radio. Um, an FTDX-10 is sort of a... Well, that would be really nice. That's but buy once, cry once. Uh, that's a real buy once, cry once. So the, the thing to keep in mind, out. Even, honestly, I, I hadn't even thought about the seventy one hundreds. I'm gonna take a look at that one again. Sure, and and it's so. it's much cheaper. The, the thing to keep in mind, I, I went with the seventy one hundred as a baseline for value and savings. That's why I went with it. If you were to ask me personally, I would say have a separate HF radio, have a separate mobile radio in the shack. Because if for some reason one of them goes down, you're not dead. You're not off the air. You still yeah. have a radio that's working. So that's my personal recommendation. But for those of people that are extremely budget conscious, it's it's an okay way to go. Yeah, it's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, thanks for uh, for joining us out there. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to get this guy in here. I know this. I know a couple people right now. So thanks, everybody, for waiting. Jarrett, how's it going? Oop, I've got now I've got to fix my my crop. And you guys welcome to stay and hang out that's on the Zoom. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm good. These are when I first got started in ham radio like a year ago, these were the type of streams that just blew my bank account out for about yeah. for about a month or <laughs> month or two cuz it was like, well, I could buy I'll just take one of all of those. Is what yeah. they're all. <laughs> it's like candy. It's just yeah, exactly. just buy, you know, just buy yeah. I think yeah, I have a 7100. That was the first HF that I bought. And I bought it because it was cheaper, thinking mm -hmm. that I was I really I don't know why, but I would I should have bought the 7300 uh and a G90 just like right out of the gate. G90 for like portable. Photo stuff. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'd be more portable with the with the 7100. It's totally portable. Um Now I didn't I didn't mention the 7100 for portability. I don't really yeah, 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 yeah. recommend it's portable. Oh, I just realized too we we skipped somebody. Uh, I'll get back to uh, David. Give me a second. I'll get you in there. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, buddy. Uh, but Jarrett, real quick too, 
mention who you are and what you do really quick because I don't think enough people know. So go ahead and throw that out there. Uh, for I'm Ham a, Radio. For, oh, for Ham Radio. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I'm a software developer and uh, really enjoyed Parks on the Air, which if you've never done Parks on the Air, it's one of the what I found to be like the most fun thing for me in Ham Radio, uh, where you go out to a park and you a national park or a state park or monument or national forest. There's a whole list of them. Mm -hmm. And you activate portably. So it's, um, you know, it's fun, like battery power, solar, if you want to, um, a small radio and antenna that you can like not scare anybody off with. And, uh, you say that you're, you, there's a website that you can go and, and spot yourself. Um, and do, and, uh, people will, you'll just get pileups. I like talking on the radio. That was what I wanted to do. Not like digital stuff. Um, so I, I wrote an app called Hammers that is very specific to portable operating. Um, actually, right now, as we're talking, working on the soda. Um, Ooh, so good here. man, but good man. For those folks, I'm in Kansas, so I'm hoping this. What is going. mountains? <laughs> what <laughs> so is what mountains? Is, I do have land in Colorado. I've seen them. We we have some there. We're just not moved over there yet. But yeah, I have, there's not one 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 summit to speak of in Kansas. Um, so uh, yeah. yeah, soda and field day coming up. Those templates are coming out, but. Um, but yeah, I wanted to mention, I was going to specifically mention the N9TAX Slim Jim. That's a roll-up Slim Jim that I got. For some reason, when I bought antennas when I first got started, because building them was scary and building them was actually the best, the most fun thing to do, mm -hmm. um, I got a copper J-pole because okay. my HOA, I can put my HOAs, I can just be like, hey, no, that's a wind, it's a wind chime. <laughs> it's a really big wind chime. It's, it's pretty. Don't worry about it. Uh, they haven't noticed it. And, uh, yeah, the NTA, N9TAX Slim Jim, which I think is just, like, you know, the ladder line mm -hmm. snipped at certain areas. Yep. Uh, those things were great. I was I was, I was was hitting, uh, like, with a Beofang on my sun porch, like, hitting repeaters that I did not think I was going to be able to hit yep. uh, just by doing that. So I, I really like those two. And they're dirt cheap. They're, like, 30 bucks, I think, for the N9TAX yeah. one on eBay or something like it that. It was a good call. Yeah. And, and again, uh, Kim, for bringing that up. Yeah. Total, total good recommendation. Yeah, Jarrett, your software is great. It's a great app. It's filling Thanks. a void that we lost uh, with Hamlog for the yeah. iPhone folks. So you're you're doing great work there. I appreciate that. Okay, let me let me toss it over here to uh, to David. How you doing, David? I'm doing well. Just want you guys know I'm a huge fan. Uh, got my tech ticket back in June watching your videos, and got my extra about a month ago. Hey, congratulations, man. Congratulations. Very good. Talking about the budget radio. This is my budget shack here, the old Kimwood uh, TS-130. Yeah. Yeah, it's $29.80. It, it works, right? And everything. <laughs> what what was that? Good, yeah, good. 300 bucks in it. I can talk to anybody in the world. What's uh, What antenna are you running? I have a M uh, homebrew MFET halfway, 132 foot. Oh, 132 uh, foot. So you're you're getting way down there. Very good for you. That's oh, great. Yeah. Then I got a uh, Tram 1480. That's the uh, 17 foot Tram. Uh, that that Yezu puts out what 85 watts. So it does really yeah. well. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Very good. Does uh, I don't I'm not familiar with that Yezu. Is it just FM? Yes, it is okay. FM only. Uh, oh Lord, I lost it. I've moved it. Yes, it's an FM only Yezu. Uh, two meter, two meter only mono band. 85 watts does great excellent hey i appreciate you hopping on with the kind words and and sharing your uh your shack with us there i appreciate that yep. all Thank right you. yeah timothy timothy how you doing oh i think you're muted or yeah I'm muted. there you no, go I'm unmuted. you got it it's actually Roger. I was hosting another oh. meeting for somebody I had to take over. So uh, <laughs> sorry, I Roger. I log out from being Timothy. Well, if you're trying to be undercover right now, you failed, Timothy. We know what's going on. <laughs> the jig is up. What's going on, Roger? How you doing? Not a whole lot. I uh, I did the buy once, cry once, but I did it used. And I bought a flex. But oh. I would tell a lot of friends that are getting into it, get a seventy three hundred. Yeah. I, I would too. If you've got the the scratch, you can throw a hundred a thousand dollars at at just the radio, right? Not the antenna, not the power supply, not the coax. Seventy three hundred is the way to go, no question. That's my yeah. POV. How do you like your flex? Would you get a sixty four hundred or what is that? Six. I got a sixty six. Sixty. Ooh, sixty six. Okay, right on. Um, actually, I tell people not to buy one. Oh. Do I you... equate the thing to Windows ninety eight. Okay. Wait, uh, it, can, it can work very well, 
but it's it's buggy. Really? Yeah, it's they just actually came out with the release now. They fixed I think one or two more problems. Mm. But they're slow in fixing stuff. Um, it's a great piece of hardware, you, incredible piece of hardware. But the software really leaves a lot to be desired. Mm. Okay, I I think I have laid hands on a Flex Radio twice, and I think both of them were the two days that I played with them at uh, Hamvention in twenty nineteen. <laughs> Great, right? I mean, they're fun-looking radios. They, they seem to, and I know everybody who has one likes them a lot. But sure, it's software. It's a software-defined radio. There's going to be software issues that come up. So. Yeah, there's software bugs in it. Yeah, and I've also told people to stay away from QRP so they don't get frustrated early on. I also say that, being the person that has too many QRP radios, but I generally agree with you. Yeah, it, it can be tough. And notice, I, I none of my mainline options were QRP except for the G90 which uh, somebody made the quote, if it's good enough for the military at 20 watts, it's good enough for me because most of the military HF radios are all 20 watts, like the Harris and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for – Roger, thanks for joining us out here. Appreciate that. Thanks for having us. Yeah. If, if I could make a comment about buy once, uh, cry once versus <laughs> spend as little as possible, mm -hmm. I think <clears throat> when we're new hands – even if we're watching that ham radio crash course, we don't know what we don't know. Sure. And so a lot of times, like my wife and I started out with um, uh, the UV5R, and it was a great option because before I spent money on something else, I got on the repeaters, got with people, saw what they were using, and then I decided to buy something that would make me compatible with them or I would have support. Uh, from them, which if I had just jumped to buy once, cry once, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So don't feel bad if you don't. I guess what I'm saying is don't feel bad if you don't buy once, cry once. It's a great philosophy. But because by spending as little as possible, you will have money to spend later on when you know what you really want. That's all I want to say. That is a, a, a very good point. I to be honest, I can see the point either way. It really is a personal choice, though. If you know, if you have gear acquisition syndrome like I do, um, you spend way too much on this kind of stuff anyway. So none of that works for me. But uh, for somebody starting out, I think that's the best way to go is where you, you, you balance out what you want to do with radio versus the cool whiz bang thing that might have 70% of what you want, but then you start using it and that lacking 30% really starts to bug the crap out of you. That happened to me with the KX2. I got to be honest. That's the, the radio that I love, but I, I just don't use it because that 30% thing bugs me really, really bad. Um, so that's a good point. Let's see. Noah, thanks for hopping on, Noah. What's up, man? Oh, let me unmute you or you unmute. There you go. Hey. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah. What's going Great. on? Yeah. Um, just like checking in on the live stream. This is the first time I've ever been on a Zoom on that's also being <laughs> broadcasted on YouTube, which is bizarre. Yeah. It's, you only have uh, 530 people watching you right now. You're good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> Don't screw this up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No pressure. <laughs> Um, so I started, um, I got a UV5R, like the camo edition. Nice. And it was like during lockdown and the pandemic. <laughs> and the pandemic I was just version, like yeah. riding my, my bike around and just like had the stock earbud in my ear and just like scanning. Mm-hmm through all the static and then occasionally the like Noah weather report would come up and I'd be like oh cool um but then uh like as I when I got my tech I got the uh that Anytone rig the um mobile rig that you mentioned oh um, okay yeah the little the little guy the 25 water yeah 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 and it's great and it like um it really got me in like it was exciting to actually like go through the file firewall and like install it because i had never done anything like that before well you were just talking um, about your bike so you're talking about in your car i assume now yeah i'm like yeah. you got to tell me about this bike that has a firewall 
no, I wish. Um, but so I was riding my bike most of the time when I was like first starting out. But um, my first HF rig that I got after I got my general, which was like back in December, was the Mountain Topper. Oh, okay. Um, because I I live in a an apartment that can't put up anything. It's like a very small studio space, and I actually can't really transmit. Maybe you have a advice for this, but like anytime I try to transmit the like uh, AFCI s switch on my um, fuse box just gets knocked off. Uh, ferrites, ferrite. Yeah. Try to try to knock down the RF that's coming back in. Even You're talking on about the on the board. mountain topper does that? Yeah, yeah, the Ooh. mountain topper does it. Get your antenna as far outside as you can. I mean, you know, as close yeah. as you can away from the the outlet or whatever it's tripping. And okay. You a grounding problem too. Yeah, probably grounding problem if you get it um, if you can get the mountain topper grounded through the antenna lug for instance, that might might help you out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, we've got a bunch of people that I still want to get in here, and we've already passed the hour. I'm going to throw to Ethan, and I'm going to click the Go Nuts button and let everybody join at once. <laughs> Thanks, Noah, for joining us. I appreciate that. Ethan, what's up, man? Hey, can you hear me okay? I'm in the car, obviously. Yeah, the uh, mic's a little funky, but I, I will just go with okay. it, man. It's Zoom. All Nobody right. can be upset. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Zoom, and I'm, I'm in the car. So, no, I just wanted to make a quick comment uh, a couple of callers ago made a similar comment but just not to feel bad about not being able to do the whole cry once uh, buy once cry once thing um i've got an ic705 i have an ic7300 an 891 you know i've got all the cool toys but that was after like 15 years of being in the hobby and buying every single other radio leading up to that point so and Radio gear doesn't lose its value <laughs> somehow. Uh, it right. does, but it, it always, you can start off with something, sell it, buy something else. Um, and I was talking to, I think, one of the other staff members the other day and talking about how for every project that I have purchased a pre made TNC, for example, I've also tried building two of them myself and probably spent more trying to build it myself than just buying one known good working one. Right. It's completely worth it. The time and effort and the learning and all of it is completely worth it. So kind of the same way with starting off with a radio that may not be the latest and greatest and per most perfect radio. Um, it still works. It's still fun. still gets you on the air. So no, uh, no harm in that. So. Right on. Good. Yeah. That's a that's a very good point, Ethan. You 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 uh you fell down the tree of acquiring radios and you hit your head on every branch yeah. as you fell, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think I am uh, on the same trajectory as you as well. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going straight yeah. to Paul. That's that's somebody I recognize. How you doing, Paul? Good, bud. How you doing? Good. Good. You got any comments for uh, people starting out or entry level radios? I would say whatever you uh, have in your mind for a budget, just triple it, <laughs> and you'll still be about halfway where you need yeah. to be. It, that's 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 the best advice I can give you. The, the guys at um, HRO have this habit of saying uh, ham radio is the 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 hobby where you buy a radio and then it's just a hundred dollars more, just a hundred dollars right. more, and it's always like a hundred dollars right. more for every extra thing that you need um that's truer words uh paul truer words <laughs> i know and when, and when you walk in the store if they know your name that's not good yeah because that's... that means you're there too often and you spent way too much money yes sir yes um, indeed but i'm just like i'm just like everybody else i mean i started out with a 25 dollars valve thing when i got my tech license uh when i upgraded the general it was you know unlock the unlock the safe Mm -hmm. um because i got the 2730 because of you and then um i got the 7300 um and i've had because i live in an apartment or a condo um a myriad of antennas from uh, the chameleon loop which i love uh to a slink antenna, which i think is a great antenna mm -hmm. for a very limited amount of space yeah um 
and uh, tri band general for my uh, for my uh, Icom 2730. But I'm enjoying it. So, you know, for me, it, it's just like, okay, what's the next greatest thing that's coming out? So now everybody's gone. The, uh, the, the Yaesu FT DX10 uh, right. is going to take over the world. But it's it's a lot more money than a 7300. It is. Um, you know, so you have, to, you have to set a budget and then exceed it every chance you get. <laughs> I, I try to tell Leia this. She she doesn't accept uh, when I tell her that, uh, you know, honey, I, I had a budget, and I passed it doing 85 miles right. an hour going to the right. interstate. Right. Like, <laughs> I you, tried, honey. You I tried. Have, you, can have, you can have a budget that's, you know, that's well-intended, but, um, you know, it's when, when the wife starts looking at everything and go, well, how much is that and how much is that? It's like, well, what, all of a sudden now you want to be good at math? It's not, you know, it's not necessary. Um, you know, this <laughs> These is are a, loose this figures. Is These are loose numbers. That right, we're, we're, right. Yeah. right. right and, I, and honestly, I bought my 7300 used, um, which, you know, I found one back in December. Um, now you can't find anything. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like I, I do like to buy once and, and cry once. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty set with what I have now. Now I'm trying to think, what do I want to put in the car uh, as an HF? And I'm kind of leaning towards the um, the FT eight ninety eight ninety one eight ninety one. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, that's what then, I have then in your, my car. And then your and then your stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, uh, you know, it's like um, my my wife's doing research on Poda, and uh, she's like, you actually have to go into the parks. And I was like, yeah, to <laughs> yeah. get out of the car. And I was like, no, no, you don't have to get out of the car if you have the right radio. Oh, so, yes. So so it's like you get that in the Tar Heel, and I think you're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I, that's, planning, but, that's what I plan to do with the local parks here and just pull yeah, up, do what I'm going to yeah. do, and get out. Uh, Paul, I don't want to cut between, you off, but between go, you, ahead, go ahead. But that's okay. Between you and, between you and uh, Mike uh, – You've cost me a fortune, and I and I thank you for it. Well, okay, well, you, that's the best comment is people that thank me for spending their money for them. So oh, I yeah. love that. Thank you. Uh, quickly, because I we're we're definitely beyond time. We're going to go to W R five G Jerry. How's it going, Jerry? Hey, good evening, Josh, and everyone uh, out there that's listening. I just wanted to kind of double down on your uh, on, on your thoughts about the seventy one hundred because I purchased mine in twenty fourteen. Mm-hmm. I purchased it for VHF UHF in the house as well as a, a you know backup UHF uh, rig, mm-hmm. and I just want to say there's another feature that uh, I didn't hear anybody mention, but you know you do get D Star. D Star is also included sure. in 7100, which would actually get you on you know some digital voice there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have D Star repeaters in your area, or if you want to go you know to a hotspot, but uh, I've had mine since 2014 and no issues whatsoever. So, yeah, I would definitely say that, you know, 7100 would be my top choice as an entry level, uh, you know, HF, you know, VHF radio. Right on. So. Yeah, it, it does have a lot of features for for the money, which is which is nice. That's kind of why it I think it deserves a spot at that uh, economic entry level kind of right. spot. So, yeah, I appreciate your thoughts, Jerry. Appreciate that. Uh, let's go to Michael. Go ahead and unmute. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Nice, uh, nice uh, zippy you got on there. Twitch, your Twitch oh, zippy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you work there or you stream? Uh, very infrequently stream. Ever had, since having a kid, there's not enough time in the day to do all my hobbies. Yeah, right and on. Now ham radio is taking over, but sometimes I speed run. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, speed run. What kind of speed run? Uh, Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. Really interesting. Yeah. I, I would I would love to hear more about that, but <laughs> probably not the right time for the topic. Really quick, Russ, uh, thank you for the super chat. 86 DM, hey, thank you very much, Dennis. I appreciate the super chat. So, what are your thoughts, Michael? Any comments yeah. on entry level radios? Yeah, I just wanted to say I got my ticket back in uh, February of this year with the pandemic. Just it was something I've always wanted to do, so I decided to get into my technician. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got the QYT for mobile and the uv 5r so mm-hmm. i definitely recommend both of those I, I think you're right though the gt 5r is better because of the spurious emissions mm-hmm. um the question that i had for you i'm also looking currently at getting my hf rig i picked up a ft891 still waiting for it to ship cool i got the bioeno power 15 amp hour battery a wolf river coil sb1000 a nano vna h4 antenna analyzer 
but I don't have an antenna tuner. I know I don't, technically don't need one, but I was yeah. curious if you had a good baseline antenna analog, antenna tuner to get. Um, LDG tuners, the, the small one for the 100-watt radios, that's probably a, a – the, the option I would go with if, if I was doing 100 watts portable. But, yeah, you're right. You, you don't need one with that with the Wolf River. In fact, I, I believe if you used it, it would be really bad. So don't do not do that. Oh, um, okay. That's yeah, you, you just you just physically adjust that antenna, and that's all you need. Yeah. Right on. Okay, cool. Good question. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, somebody said the Z100. Yeah, that's, that's the model. Very good. Okay. Chris, N1XJI. How you doing? Not bad. How are you, Josh? Nice Good. to f finally be able to talk with you. Right on. Well, you can always talk with me on the after chat. By the way, everybody, we're going to head to Discord in a little bit. So if you want to get the after chat started, go ahead. Uh, Chris, yeah, what's up, man? What are your thoughts? Hey, I've got the uh, FT70D, uh, mm -hmm. which I think is a good radio. Uh, I just have uh, uh, hotspot issues uh, with internet and stuff here sure um but i also got started back in 95 and the first couple of radios i had gotten was a uh, icon whiskey 32 alpha mm -hmm. which i've now had to convert to uh house power mm -hmm. and i have a uh ft 90r which i'm I love, and it's a nice, small, compact radio, and it's a very decent r radio when I've been able to use it, uh, but my conditions are like uh, n Noah's as far as antenna restrictions, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to fi figure out what I have or what I can do to get, get out there as well. Right on. Very and good. I also have a, uh, I apologize, uh, from my grandfather who has passed away, God bless him, uh, a 757GX. And I was trying, I was kind of looking for recommendations for uh, antennas for that radio. I'm not familiar with that radio. Is that VHF, UHF, or HF? It's an HF rig. It's an HF. It's an old uh, uh, Ye Yezu. Okay. I mean, any HF antenna is going to probably do okay, but obviously going with a resonant antenna is probably the way to go. Good. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks, if uh, anybody Chris. anybody has any suggestions, I also have, I apologize, uh -huh. Bob Fang 82 uh, UV82. Right on. I have a pair of those. So. Well, but if anybody has... Good radius. If anybody has a recommendation for Chris, uh, drop it in the the live stream chat. And Chris, you keep an eye on that. Maybe somebody will cover your cover your uh, your needs there. Okay, Wes, Wes is in the house. What's up, buddy? Don't. There you go. How's it going? Know, uh, pretty good. Don't know how well you'll be able to hear me. I'm using AirPods, but uh, it's a little uh, underwatery. But you're you're okay. You're making it. You're the last caller. We'll call it uh, for the show. Oh, so. rock on. Well, I'd say uh, one advantage of the 7100 that most people are underrated about is it'll do single sideband on two meters, and I believe 70 centimeters. Great point. And uh, that's actually very hard to find these days on a standalone radio. In yes. fact, I don't think there's one made that does it. 991A oh, does. Well, yeah, the 991A and the 7100, but I was saying standalone uh, without doing a shack in a box. Oh, uh Oh yeah, well the ninety seven hundred. Okay, yeah. yeah it well, it better, <laughs> it better yeah, do single that side price, bad. For that price, it better. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'd also say when first starting out, if you're working on shoestring budget, if you're really interested in saving money, just get the radio you really want because you're going to get it eventually anyway, and you'll just end up, <laughs> you know, not being happy with the radio you get. Because I made that. And get the G90, and uh, eight months. He went full robot, but I his you point know, is right. Was, yeah, my wife was less than thrilled because I spent the 500 or so with the G90 and everything, but I ended up getting the 7300 anyway. You know. Yep, 
that that is that is true. That is true. I, I, the hope the hope anyway for the video today, uh, the slides was to just talk about radios that I don't think people would be disappointed by. That was my largest goal. Was there are a ton of radios people buy that they are like it's it's not it's not going to cover all your bases per se, but it should cover them enough that you're not going to be disappointed, which is you know worse. I'll, I'll say with QRP, your video of you sitting there for two days straight calling CQ, just getting more and more CQ. Yeah, you know that 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 was me with the G90. Yeah, you know it gets really frustrating because. Everybody walks on you, you know. Yep. If you're trying to break a pile up with a G90, it's not happening. Nope. You know. Yeah, sure. And, uh, Absolutely. It's very, very frustrating. And once I got the 7300, I haven't even turned on the G90. So. Yeah. You know. Mine lives but, in a trash that, can. That that was my recommendations. Is uh, you know, the 7100 is great because you get single sideband on, uh, and I believe you can also do D-Star on HF with it. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. Very and, good. Uh, yeah. So very all good right. comments from all of you. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the show so you guys can hop on off here and we'll join the Discord here in a little bit. I hope everybody, yeah, thanks everybody for, for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so if you want to join us over on Discord, it's really quite simple. You just take the link in the description. Discord is a text application website for your phone, for your computer. It is text chat and voice chat, and we do a Discord live stream at the uh, at the end of this show. I live stream to Twitch, and we take your questions. We try and answer them the best we can, which is always – it's not difficult for us because we're full of opinions, plus everybody in the room is a lot of really smart people. So, um, yeah, if you'd love to join us over there, take the link in the description. Okay, I am going to go ahead and wrap up the show by saying a big thank you to – the patron supporters thank you guys so much you are the reason i'm able to do what i do and it really does mean a lot when you know something breaks or i need to add a new cloud lifter for leia's microphone on the podcast uh, it's it's through your support that makes that happen so big shout out these are the patrons uh that are the producer level so these are the folks if you want to blame somebody on the first episode of the month hey there's Wes right there there he goes uh if you want to blame somebody for the episodes that go on the first episode of the month for the ham radio crash course it's all these guys they're the ones to blame they're the ones that pick the uh the the topic for the the show and we uh also ask the other patrons to come up with show ideas so that that makes things really fun nick smith thank you for the super chat buddy i appreciate that it means a lot thank you um yeah so we've got next week's gonna be fun I, i'm not gonna spoil anything but I'll, I'll be um i'll hopefully be doing something fun we'll try and figure out the best way to live stream uh where i'm gonna be and what i'm gonna be doing so um make sure if you haven't click subscribe click that thumbs up and click the bell so that i can send you any of the videos that i post and when i go live as well also ham nation this week that's right we got a ham nation episode coming up so i hope you tune in for that as well yeah i uh, can't say enough for everybody here thank you everybody really appreciate it and again um join us on the discord click that facebook page you can join us there as well there's a lot of cool stuff going on and uh yeah right on let's check the chat make sure i didn't miss anything let's see make sure you know everything do, 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 do. really good discussions it looks like we had some newcomers come in and everybody was really helpful in in covering some of the questions that came up my uh my wife invited a family over I think and the kids are playing and I can hear them screaming so uh, that hopefully is not making it through the audio <laughs> all right I'm gonna play you out with some memes thanks so much for watching I'm heading over to the the discord there thanks so much again for for uh, watching posting your comments below if you're watching this team replay let me know what you think let me know your thoughts your recommendations for entry-level radios what you ended up purchasing how you like it would you have gone a different way all those things are super valuable helps me maybe refine my position in recommending things to people all right i am josh ki6naz you've been watching the hammer to crash course and i'll talk to you later see ya